Hi, welcome back to my podcast. This is Rosalind Yukich from A Little R&R, and I am so glad that you are here with me today. If you are a new listener, would you just please let me know in the comments how you found me? I would love to know how you ended up finding my podcast or finding my blog. Also, if you are a returning visitor, a returning listener, I am so glad that you stop by each and every week to follow this podcast. That means so much to me. So I am just glad that you are here. And today we have another reader question. And that question is, how do I find time to read without falling asleep? This is a very very important question because I think all of us struggle with that from time to time. I know that I do. And so that is the question that we're going to be answering today. If this is something that you struggle with, be sure to stay tuned. Okay, so once again, that reader question is, how do I find time to read without falling asleep. So I know that this is, again, something that we all struggle with from time to time. We're super busy people, so prone to burning the candle at both ends. And so, um, you know, even though science tells us we need to get a minimum of eight hours of sleep, and I, I think that few of us actually do, I know that I really struggle with that myself. It is something that especially um, with chronic illness, I should be getting eight to nine hours of sleep every single night and I can tell you that most nights that doesn't happen and it's just because I get up so early because I have so many things that I'm doing right now with my life in the season of life that I'm in and um, you know goodness when my kids go to bed that is my me time I'm finally getting some me time and I don't want to spend it sleeping <laughs> I want to be able to unwind and just put my feet up and kind of enjoy the silence a little bit and so um, you know our schedules really make us so prone to by the time we you know when we get up in the morning and we sit down to have our devotions um, you know our, our we're having trouble keeping our eyes open and healthy and keeping our brains engaged because our brains are just like go back to bed go back to sleep so um, I do have a few practical tips though that I do and I actually do all three of these things on a regular basis and they do really help a lot with keeping me from falling asleep while I am doing my daily devotions and so I hope that these are going to be helpful for you because listen when you think about it practically we get up out of bed and we kind of stumble into the kitchen we get our cup of coffee and we sit down our metabolism is not kicked in yet and so if you are not a morning person um, and actually, I think very few of us probably are. Um, you know, we go from laying down to sitting down and our bodies are just like, mm, yeah, this just feels really comfortable. And so we just want to fall asleep. So the first thing that I do, um, the, or my first tip is um, exercise, some, some form of exercise. It doesn't have to be long. I mean, you don't really have to make a whole session out of it. Just, you know, five to seven minutes. Uh, you know, if you have a treadmill or some other exercise machine, doing five to seven minutes of that, just getting that blood flowing, um, or, you know, just doing like a walk, run in place, you know, for five to seven minutes. Um, one thing that I regularly do is I move my prayer to before I read my Bible, and I pace up and down my kitchen and pray. And that's not just because I'm a Pentecostal, and I am, but it's really serves a practical purpose for helping to get that blood flowing, helping to get my brain engaged, my metabolism kicked in, um, you know, those endorphins going, and so that by the time I sit down to read my Bible, it helps to keep my brain engaged. And so my first practical tip is try a little bit of exercise before you, before you start your devotions, and I think that will help a lot. Um, I know that, you know, for a long time, that was me. And I finally just was like, hmm, maybe I'll try exercising first. And it was really a game changer for me. The second thing that I do is I take notes. So if you, if you listen to my podcast last week, you know that I have the same for my post-it notes. And if you look at any of my Bibles from the past, the ones that have been, are all falling apart, you will see post-it notes all over my Bible, notes taken all over my Bible in the margins, in some places so many that are they're hard to read because I was writing really super small to make sure that I had room for everything. Um, 
I take a lot of notes while reading and studying my Bible. And that really helps a lot. So maybe you're not a note taker. So you can try with the Good Morning Girls, the color coding, color coding the passages in your Bible. Or you can try, um, like I have a system and I can link it actually in the description below. Um, I have a system where I actually do circles around words and squares around words and, you know, little clouds around words and squiggly lines and underlining. And I have this whole thing. And um, so I'll link that in the description below. All of those practical things really help to keep my brain engaged in what I am reading so that I'm a lot less prone to actually kind of make my, for my wine to wander and my eyes to kind of start, you know, uh, you know, closing and stuff like that while I'm reading my word. So taking notes or doing some other kind of a system where you are actually, um, your brain is active, your hands are engaged in what you are reading, and it really will help to keep you from falling asleep. The third one is this. Move your devotions to a later part of the day. There is literally no verse in the Bible that says that we have to have our quiet time first thing in the morning. Now, I talked about this a lot in my um, in my last podcast, and so you might want to check that out. I'll link, leave a link below. But um, there is no verse in the Bible that says that quiet time has to happen first thing in the morning. And I know a lot of people talk about, you know, tithing our day, you know, giving that first part of our day to God. And, and, I, and I think that that's good. Um, just as I think that it is, you can say really the same thing about giving the last part of your day to God so that as you go to sleep, your mind is thinking upon God and meditating upon God. Really... An argument could be made for having our devotions midday because, you know, having a time of, you know, maybe a short time of prayer in the morning, having our devotions midday, and then coming back and thinking about that same, you know, what, what we were studying about at the end of our day. So really essentially stretching your devotions out all day long so that our, we're not just giving God a portion of our day, that we're giving God our whole day. I think a stronger argument really could be made for that. And so, um, you know, there, there, but there is no scripture in the Bible that talks about tithing our day to God. I think that the whole day really belongs to him. And so we should really give our whole day to him. Um, so, Moving your devotions to a later part of the morning or a later part of the day, there is there's no shame in that. Um, there's, you know, those who get up early in the morning and spend their time early in the morning with God, they aren't stronger Christians or better Christians or uh, more mature Christians. They're just Christians that do their devotions early in the day, just as there are strong, mature, um, devoted Christians that do their devotions at the end of the day. And I, as I said earlier, I think what we really should be doing is taking our entire day and giving our entire day to God. So try leaving your Bible open, um, you know, at a, at a prominent place in your home so that you see it, you know that's where you're studying at. It helps to direct your mind back to God, back to what you're reading or do like I do, and I keep um, index cards in my pocket, so that as I put my hand in my pocket, I feel them there, and it, I am reminded of the verses that I'm meditating on. And so um, you don't have to do your devotions first thing in the morning. Give your entire day to God. So if that is a real struggle for you, and no, and no matter what you've tried, it's just getting up in the morning and doing your devotions in the morning, you're just falling asleep, how you have to ask yourself, is that actually being effective? Because devotions isn't just about the time of day that you do them or about doing them at all. They are devotions with God serve a much greater purpose. And that is for um, becoming changed into God's likeness. And so if they are not having a significant change or bringing about significant change in your life, then they are not fulfilling their intended purpose. And so then we need to find a different way to do those devotions so that they are serving their intended purpose. And um, if you move them to another day and they end up doing that, that is the key for you. That is what you need to do then. So 
these are the these are the three tips that I have for you for um, finding time to read without falling asleep. Try exercising first. It's just you know three, five, seven minutes, however long it's going to take just to kind of get your brain woke up a little bit. Try taking notes so that your brain is engaged um, and your hands are engaged with what you're reading um, or even just try moving your devotions to a different time of the day so that um, you're a little bit more awake and you're much more able to absorb what it is that you're reading and what God is trying to speak to you through his word. So if these tips were helpful for you, and I really hope that they are, um, would you first of all just let me know? You can leave a comment in this video if you're watching the video or if you are listening to the podcast. Um, just pop on over to my blog and leave a comment in the blog post that um, accompanies this, this podcast and let me know that this podcast was meaningful for you and how it was meaningful for you, how it has helped to encourage you in your quiet times. And be sure to rumble this video, like it, share it with your friends, let your friends know about the A Little R&R podcast, and um, I will see you right back here next week.